एवरीवन दिस इज नीना मिश्रा वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ब्लॉकचेन टुडे विद एरिक एरविन सीईओ ऑफ रियलिटी शेयर्स दे हैव रिसेंटली फाइल्ड फॉर अ ब्लॉकचेन ईटीएफ एरिक वेलकम एंड थैंक्स फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी प्लेजर टू बी हियर सो एरिक बिटकॉइन इज वेरी हॉट दिस ईयर it's up about 1600% here to date but many market experts and regulators have warned investors about bitcoin calling it a speculator bubble or comparing it with tulip mania and bitcoin is also very notorious for its extreme volatility but even bitcoin's harshest critics recognize the extraordinary potential of the blockchain which is the technology that underpins bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies now this technology is still very new and its full potential is not yet known could you talk a little bit about the blockchain technology and why many experts say that blockchain and this technology could change the world sure and and um, and i think that's a great introduction is just to think about the distinction but also the similarities between the two and while you know like any new technology mm-hmm. there's there's a certain amount of um, first adoption and then, well first understanding and then adoption and then execution and then finally we start to see the benefits blockchain is in that early stage right now the analogy that's often used is think of kind of the internet in 1994 you know mm-hmm. we the TCPIP protocol was apparent and and useful for for communications across networks and across computers but without a web browser to take advantage of that the average person had no idea really what the internet was and what kind of power the internet could bring that's really where we are with blockchain mm-hmm. right now blockchain mm-hmm. is really in its infancy but we've gone beyond just simple proof of um, concept mm-hmm. and and now actually it's being implemented across a whole host of different sectors almost every sector of the economy is currently considering or contemplating the use of blockchain in their business so we have heard about the use of this technology mainly in peer to peer payments and supply chain tracking and you mentioned that almost every sector every area of the sp- of the economy could benefit from this technology but which areas or you know sectors or industries they are likely to benefit the most from this technology in this in your view so maybe um maybe even we could take one step farther back and first kind of define it or at least um frame it sure. what what is that would blockchain? be helpful mm-hmm. when we when we talk about blockchain really what it is it's a it's a distributed database of ownership and so in if you think about the internet the internet was a distributed network of computers where you had information and you could share information across the world across this this network right here you can actually share value or share ownership mm-hmm. across the world and the the key difference here is because it's a distributed ledger think mm-hmm. of it just as that everyone knows exactly who owns what asset or at least what private numbered account owns what asset and so you you can't have a copy you can't have two of the same thing so you can actually store value on this mm-hmm. network mm-hmm. so this is where um really this is a problem that computer scientists have been working on for for decades and then finally was solved with the bitcoin so what that allows us to do now is have an open network for supply chain management so for example walmart can track all the way down to the farm that the mango was grown in right to the shelf of the Walmart store that the mango was sold in wow. and every step along the way in mm-hmm. that supply chain and that's going to um, potentially save billions of dollars in food poisoning outbreaks mm-hmm. because instead of having to take every mango off the shelf they can just eliminate the mangoes that actually caused that food poisoning outbreak sure. or medicine so mm-hmm. in pharmaceutical industry again kind of in as it relates to the supply chain every single step along that supply chain they can now have a distributed network and they can know where the ownership of each of those different drugs have passed from one hand to the next to the next and and there's a significant amount of um, health insurance fraud in the in the healthcare industry and and just 
this one kind of open, transparent, distributed ledger system of ownership will prevent billions, and they say tens of billions of dollars in lost revenue in the kind of pharmaceutical health care space. And that's just to name a few Mm -hmm. transaction payment processing across financial companies, stock, you know, record ownership transactions, and then security. You know, every time another company gets hacked into, Mm -hmm. we think the blockchain could have solved so much of that problem because instead of each different siloed database owning your personal information, now your information is distributed across an entire network, and so it's it's almost unhackable. That's like the Bitcoin blockchain has never been hacked. There have mm-hmm. been exchanges which have been hacked, right. so but many times. no decentralized mm-hmm. bank, you know, database like this has ever been hacked, and so mm-hmm. it provides a lot more security for information as well. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. It's it's an amazing technology, and the more we learn uh, more about it, you know, it becomes more interesting. So your company has filed for a blockchain ETF. What investors need to know about the CTF and the underlying index? So we're obviously very excited about the space, and mm-hmm. and we did um, we partnered with Nasdaq mm-hmm. in order to develop an an index based on companies that were either implementing using or selling the service or actually selling the technology that goes into the blockchain networks. We filed for an ETF and we're currently in the quiet period. So that Mm -hmm. ETF filing Mm -hmm. is currently in the preliminary perspective stage. So we can't really talk about the ETF perspective, but Mm -hmm. we can certainly talk about the the kinds of companies in Mm -hmm. the index and Mm -hmm. why we partnered with NASDAQ. NASDAQ was actually an early innovator in Mm -hmm. the blockchain arena. They've been working on blockchain technology and their own business for over four years now. Mm -hmm. They've actually launched a couple of private blockchain exchanges Mm -hmm. for for individuals to to list their private company stock on. And and you just think about from a stock market's perspective, if I buy a stock from you, we we know that that trade processes instantaneously. But the actual settlement of that trade takes well, now two days, but in, in the past it was three days to, to happen. In an electronic digital age, there's no need for all that back office administration and support. So that, that's a, a perfect use case of where blockchain could really reduce friction in the system, reduce costs, and improve the overall productivity of an entire kind of ecosystem. So that's a good example. And NASDAQ actually is one of the constituents in that index as well. So... About the index, I read that uh, it's a smart beta index. Could you tell us what factors uh, are being used to determine the weights of the holdings in the index and then in the ETF? Yeah, so we start with a scoring system. And because this is a a somewhat nascent technology, what we do is we evaluate every business on a a seven-factor system Mm -hmm. from research and development cost, so how much of their R&D budget is invested, or how much of their overall budget is invested in R&D, number of patents they've filed in the blockchain space, are they a user of the technology, are they selling technology to the users of the the technology, or are they more of a service provider where they're actually consulting and and offering it as a service. There's a term now, blockchain as a service, like um, software as a service. Mm -hmm. And then economic impact. So what will the likely economic impact of the growth of blockchain be on this business? So you may take a company like IBM, for example, Mm -hmm. which is um, probably the preeminent leader in the space of of blockchain for enterprise. But IBM is a big business. They have artificial intelligence. They have a number of other things going on in the business. And so they may not see the economic impact right away if blockchain becomes a runaway success. That's good, and because there are so those, many revenue streams. Right, right. And so then all of those things roll up into a final blockchain score, which we've trademarked. And and really that blockchain score ranks the company's viability in the index, whether or not they make it into the index, but also the ranking within the index. So companies with the highest blockchain score will have the highest weight in the index itself. And that's very interesting. So when do you ex- expect to receive the approval from the SEC? Based on our filing date, so typically what will happen is um, it's a 75-day 
period between when you file the, your original registration statement and when the final effective date is, provided that there's no question. So that would put us out to about mid-January okay. when we expect to have an effective registration statement. I'll just add to that um, just how the weightings of the companies are selected. Because, again, it is a somewhat newer, nascent industry, what we wanted to do was bring on the experts beyond just NASDAQ and ourselves, and we've built out a blockchain advisory group okay. of um, both cryptocurrency experts but as well as university professors mm-hmm. and, and research fellows from Cambridge Research who have done a significant amount of work on the whole blockchain space and which mm-hmm. industries are going to be most impacted in order to provide input into that process, of which companies are actually building out a procedure and which companies are just kind of joining up a membership group and saying that they're involved in blockchain but are really just kind of faking it. Yeah, that's great. So I think three or four more ETF providers have filed for blockchain ETFs. Uh, Can you explain in what way their strategies are different uh, from this ETF or this index? Yeah, well, it'd be hard for me to, um, again, because everybody's in that quiet period as well, and so there's not a lot of information on that, and it's always hard to comment on what the competitors are doing. I know that we we didn't want to just, as far as reality shows is concerned, we did not have any interest in just putting out a product, hoping it would stick, thinking, Mm -hmm. oh, here's a hot topic or a hot sector, let's just put something out there. We really wanted to build a genuine business on this. We think this is going to be a... 15 to 20 year phenomenon and and we're going to develop a number of different investment products around the whole blockchain arena. So this is something we're in with both feet right up to the neck. Um, This is a big deal for us and and we look forward to to really kind of bringing our expertise to bear on both the index as well as future investment products. So I hope to think that we, um, we did that with the partnership with NASDAQ and with this blockchain advisory group as well. Eric, thank you very much for your time today. Good luck with the ETF, and I think we'll talk to you again after it starts trading. Great. Well, thank you for having me, and and, uh, thanks to all the listeners as well. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. That was Eric Irwin, CEO of Reality Shares. If you have any questions, please email podcast at zax.com. And please visit the ETF section of zax.com for more information on Bitcoin, blockchain and related ETFs.